So yesterday we had this FAI press conference, um, pretty grim, to be honest. Uh, these are the facts when it comes to the Football Association of Ireland right now. Uh, the FAI's got liabilities of at least 55 million euro. The FAI has made a loss of nearly 9 million euro last year. The former CEO, John Delaney, received a payoff of 462,000 euro this year. John Delaney made a personal donation of 50,000 euro to the FAI last year as part of 650,000 euro that was raised by benefactors for the association. The Office of Corporate Enforcement is investigating the FAI. The FAI is to settle with the revenue commissioners for 2.7 million euro. That's underpaid employment taxes and VAT. Martin O'Neill and Roy Keane received a payoff of 1.9 million euro. The Aviva Stadium debt will be refinanced until 2034. The association's auditors, Deloitte, do not support the assumption the FAI is a going concern, although executive lead Paul Cook was positive yesterday about refinancing and being on a sound footing by 2023. A Sport Ireland commissioned KOSI report was referred to on Garda Siakana. Pension and loyalty bonus agreements totaling €3 million Euro with John Delaney were agreed by certain board members in 2014 that were authorised to deal with John Delaney's contract. Donald Conway, who was stepping down as president after the January EGM, was not aware of these additional details. Daniel, you've written about this in the Irish Independent today. Can Irish football be saved? And are we now looking at a lost decade? Yeah, um, it's, it's carnage. I mean, you, you know, you, you listen, sometimes you, you know, you listen to all those facts being read out in a, in a row and, you know, you can get consumed in it, you know, because you're covering it for a long period of time. But actually, it's sometimes when you sometimes step back and just consider it all, consider the whole picture. Um, and I did write about it today. I mean, I think, I think it's very fair to say now that, that this this era, this this John Delaney era, as it will be known, um, you know, it's the worst thing that's that's ever happened to to football in this country. Um, I, because even any uh, positives during that era, I guess everything is jeopardised now by everything that 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 hangs over at the FBI. That you, you talk about the lost decade. I mean, the next the. the the decade that could be lost could be the next one. That's what I mean. You know, you know what I mean? But, but also the last one too, in the sense that um, it, it, whatever about maybe some of the, I guess, uh, reportage and, 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 you know, allegations of sort of personal excess and so on, that ultimately like the broader picture here was, was, was very avoidable. Like there's been a, a decade of denial when it comes to, to the FAI's finances. And that is, that is what I think jars so much, is that there would have been, a, you know, a, and I went to pretty much all of the AGMs, for example, when accounts were presented. Those AGM events were <coughs> always uh, presented as a good news story. There was interviews and statements and comments made about profits nine years in a row, about uh, that the FAI could be debt-free by 2020. And, you know, you're thinking here, well, hang on. I mean, just you, you look back to the sums at the start and, and, and the mistakes that were made when it came to the, the financing of the, uh, the tickets to sell the Aviva and, and what a sort of dreadful mistake that was. And, but but there seemed to be always this mad sense of, and it is that old statement about the pride coming before the fall, that there was never any sense of acknowledgement that maybe things weren't as rosy as were being betrayed. And in fact, anyone who, who sort of made statements to the contrary um, would, would have been ostracised or, or scoffed at or, or laughed at. I mean, I, I made a reference in the piece today, Catherine Murphy, two, three years ago, uh, it was January 2017, uh, John Delaney appearance in front of the Oireachtas Committee. Like most of the um, FEI dealings with the political classes over the past decade, they were sort of greeted like heroes. I mean, this whole portrayal of Shane Ross and, you know, Brendan Griffin and, and people such as that as reformers now is laughable because actually um, there was plenty of reportage out there, um, plenty of questions that could have been reasonably asked that people in, in authority weren't willing to ask. They were happy to just take at face value what they were told, that everything was fine, even though we know for a fact now, as was reported several times this year, I think the Sun at the start of the year, that the FAI were well known for their early drawdown of funding on an annual basis. Like even there's just all these little signs that should have, you know, the alarm bells should have been ringing to some degree that this is a, a problem that people should be concerned about. But no, again, the, you know, the, 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 the message was there that we'll, we'll be okay will be debt free. This is the message. And as I said, Catherine Murphy, uh, 2017, 
raised the point that at the FEI AGM, why are there no questions? Why is it always this particular type of event? And at the time, the, the response from John Delaney was, well, you may be paying attention to, to media reports, but we give out our accounts to our members. We, you know, we print our accounts, we put them out in the public domain. They're there for people to see. And I must say that sometimes, and I would be guilty of it, and, you know, and I think it's a fair point that I would be very critical of people who didn't hold the FBI authorities to account that why people didn't stand up and, and say stop it would annoy me at those meetings we didn't have these ovations these these sort of over the top um you know gestures and 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 sort of symbolic acts to sort of showcase our love for for this great leader who was taking us in a particular direction but i guess when you think about it you know people have to, we're taking on trust a lot of stuff to, and, and information that was being presented to them. And what we have now is this sort of almost unprecedented situation where they've had to restate accounts. They've had to go back and say, this was the surplus that wasn't a surplus. These were the director's fees here. Well, actually, the figure was X, but actually it's Y. And uh, so, like, when you, when, you, when you take all of that into consideration, I would imagine that there probably is going to be a certain amount of embarrassment, but also anger out there. And I think a word that's also been used is a sense of betrayal as well. I think there's anger because we've seen the financial health of the association deteriorate. We've seen the Aviva Stadium debt and Albatross since the Vantage Club failed scheme. Hmm. The League of Ireland's been left to drift without proper investment. And the, what the picture being portrayed is completely out of sync with those realities. Yeah. Uh, Johnny, you speak, you've been, you're involved in football. You speak to a lot of people in the game. What, is, is, is it rock bottom? Well, if, if there's worse than this, I wouldn't like to be there, you know. Um, it's Yesterday was a day of absolute shame. Um, there's more than one person definitely culpable in terms of what's gone on. Um, I think Dan's point about the politics and the politicians, um, we saw the Healy Ray uh, episode in the Oireachtas Committee um, where John Delaney was, was promised a, a welcome to, to beat all welcomes in County Kerry. Um, he'll be voted in in the next election. People in Kerry um, will vote for him, and I think as people we we have to uh, look at the politicians we're electing in this country. But I think in football, football has been badly let down by politicians because Catherine Murphy, um, the Social Democrats, can be very proud of the role that she played. Um, the TDs who who probed uh, the FAI at that embarrassing Rockus hearing earlier on this year, I think they played a, a very good role as well. Jonathan Roach, um, Sinn Fein, uh, to name but Jonathan, Jonathan O'Brien, sorry, to name but one. Um, but I think football has been failed by politicians in this country when, when the FEI CEO kind of stopped giving interviews and the, you know, the FEI AGMs started turning into something more reminiscent of what you'd get in Pyongyang. I think there were... There shouldn't be. Security in the car park. I remember the, I've the, never the, been at one, was, so I'm only, I'm only the, one uh, what I heard. The, like, the, when you think about it, you step back and now, if, you, if, if it was, there was some stuff there that if you were watching a documentary about some sort of, uh, you know, some far-off country where people would speak a different language, you know, you would be sort of laughing at some of this stuff that actually happened. But, I mean, it did happen there and now. I think the first time there was security in the car park at one of the AGMs, I do think there might have been some bogus information that there was going to be some kind of protest or whatever it might have been. So, OK, fair enough. You can sort of step back and go, well, if people thought there was going to be a scene, I sort of get it, right? But then, like, in, in subsequent years, when you've got, like, uh, been taken through side exits and, you know, fire exits and back doors, so, like, you know, you couldn't go through reception and I happened to meet the delegates at an FEI AGM. It's not exactly, you know, uh, a, a security threat event. And... Again, this was at a time where uh, asking questions about the finances was deemed to be bringing unnecessary negativity. Um, when actually, it's a it's a function, it's a normal function of a you know of a functioning organisation that you so have an annual see, event. How much investment there is in questions. the game? Yeah, to just but even just to to ask questions. It's it's like not everyone was suggesting that everything was wrong, but it's a case of well. There's a bank debt here, there's, there's, there's refinancing deals been done here and there. You know, where is the forum to ask questions about this? And then, to be fair, the last year or two, that stance was softened uh, to the point where there was seemingly a conscious effort to have more media briefings again, to ask more questions. But basically, the questions, that, you know, the accounts that were presented in the last two years weren't actually the true picture. So uh, the whole period in itself, I mean... Honestly, we will look back and wonder how 
how this was allowed to happen and how certain people were portrayed in a certain way. Did the, um, the Sport Ireland and the government have to answer questions about they, that? Oh, the they, government absolutely do. No, they do. As I said, Sport Ireland were getting early. Listen, there's only so much they can do. And they maybe, you know, there's a, they're a regulatory body, but, you know, <laughs> there, there's questions around that. But I think the short answer to your question is yes. I mean, uh, when Sport Ireland were pulled in, uh, to one of the first Dáil hearings in, in March or April time. I mean, I think at one point they acknowledged that it was well known. That, and again, it's going back to the early drawdowns that people were aware that for whatever reason, the FAI were always very anxious to, to, to draw down funds, you know, as early as possible. Um, and, and I think, you know, people knew that there was always a debt position there. But it, it's just the extent of it and the scale of it and are, now, are, are you know, you, further, the, how far it actually went. Is, um, the, the, the thing, JD, is uh, like qu quite sorry, simply, to, to, to vest power in so much power in one person in any walk of life is fraught with danger. And if that person has failings... Well, how did the board allow that to happen? Well, that's that's how autocratic regimes work. Eventually, you, you get people on the board that are basically just subordinate and... Um, well, what, what happened, John? I mean, like... I, no, and, and as I said, it's not it's not a one man show in the sense, and I think that you know there's 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 processes, and <clears> we, still, we I mean again, I think part of the problem with this as well is that there, there were people from the FBI speaking yesterday about wanting it to be a line in the sand, but it's very hard for the public to fully embrace that until we actually haven't seen the full reports and everything fully play themselves out, the COSI report that you mentioned, and th that's meant to detail some of these things. And but whoever's going to service the debt, like, they need to be convinced. Do you know what I mean? They need yeah. to be convinced well, just to answer your point, But just to answer your point about the board, and, and to go back to, I, again, I mean, during this time, you know, while governing bodies, you know, in UEFA, where we had people moving up to ranks in UEFA, were making firm stances on term limits, you know, reducing term limits, ensuring that there was a turnover of, um, you know, directors and, and board members on a regular basis. You know, the FBI was having meetings to push out age limits to uh, basically ensure that, 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 that multiple terms for people uh, was not out of the question. I mean, over a period of time, the only real changes to the FBI board were when people passed away and when there was vice president and vice presidential uh, changes to happen. And when you think about it, like one of the big selling points of, of football is that it's a participation sport. It's the biggest participation sport in the country. It matters to a lot of people. Yet, if you look back over a period of 15 years, there was only 12, 13, 14 people rotating that actually sat at the most powerful influential table. And what happened was that people who, who sort of graduated to the FAI board, it wasn't a reflection of uh, excellence or expertise or skills they would bring. It was a reflection of long service. It was like a testimonial reward. Mm. It was like uh, after your 25 years of service to your particular league, and I appreciate these people have met, you know, uh, essentially of all committed as volunteers and and have you know they've they've done work around the country you can argue that you know we have a history of a, a lot of long serving administrators but where they started initially you know was with it was with good intentions there but that actually this decision making body of a company with a turnover of like 50 million a year yeah, a rubber stamp the, 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 like. the board the board members i mean the they didn't have the skill set to, to deal with that. And that's blatantly been acknowledged, but they were sanctioning decisions, or in some cases they weren't aware of decisions that were being sanctioned, well, that have had profound. absolutely profound mm -hmm. implications for the game. So they are all it, it, culpable, regardless of what they knew or what they didn't know, Murray, they all are Murray, all responsible. When Eddie Murray, who was struggling to hear the questions at the Rocks Committee, when he said he thought they'd one bank account, and it turned out, what are they, 25? He was the honorary treasurer. And he's exactly the type of person sort of that Dan is talking about there, where there, there are these kind of ageing people like testimonial type thing but um, Brian Gartland put up a tweet yesterday at uh, the Dundalk um, centre back which I think kind of sums it up um, where he basically spoke about the, the damage that um, this had done if I can actually find it here um, Johnny's managed to beautifully refresh his screen at the last minute here I have so Brian but in fairness Brian, Brian Garton's tweet anyway was basically I will, the, fo I will the football fan the volunteer the people who and, didn't and let them. it's what's yeah. sad for me JD is that if you look at the League of Ireland and the state of grounds around the country the but they can't afford it because of the, the stadium they, 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 they can't. And like I spoke to Drogheda United. The Viva Stadium is the Albatross. Yeah. Why are we spending the next 15 years on this stadium? Well, I, I spoke to Drogheda United. Why don't chairman we sell the stake? The, well, we the, that's, that's a complex that, that, issue. Whether well, the IRFU would even want that is another matter. That's a, I, I mean, I, I did a story at the start of the week, and that came from you know people in UEFA do believe that that's what you do. Now, there is no real. Um, 
you know, there's no, there's not around European football, like stadium ownership isn't as big a thing, you know, for football associations as it is here. But I mean, I think in Ireland we have a sort of obsession with, you know, owning something and a property and having the stadium and. Um, the, the, but, the, but the decisions that were made a long time ago, I mean, again, I'm not going back over all ground, but I did a lot of stuff work on this around 2010, 2011. The stadium didn't need to be that uh, burden on the FEI. Like this, the, the stadium, it was bad decisions made around the stadium that made it that way. And and I still think that... And it uh, never recovered from that, though. No, it didn't. No, and, and, no, and no, that the was the biggest this, mistake. Yeah. This that, was, this whole yeah. that was the biggest mistake. I mean, you know, you can strip personality and all these things away from it and whatever your view on personalities, again, and people. But actually... You know, and I've and I've written this. I you know when September when John Delaney left, I, I would have made the point that as a, as a pure job definition title, like the chief executive officer during that period and the people around them, they had that was the biggest business decision of of that a whole tenure. And whatever you think about anything else that happened before or after that, that was the key point, and that was the one that they got badly wrong. And there was opportunities in the aftermath of the initial mistakes that were made to cut prices, to look at different changes of strategy, to maybe try and, um, you know, to, to sort of soften the, the blow. And you know, decisions were made again to just pursue with the same prices, but a direct debit scheme. People just, you know, then the recession kicked in and people just cancelled direct debits and, and that was it. And again, there just was a, it took eight years, I think it took eight, nine years for there to be an admission that actually maybe, do you know what, maybe those prices were wrong. Like again, it's the pride before the fall. There was never, there was always a sense of no, people said we wouldn't pay off the debt, we'll pay off the debt. By and, that was it. and that was always it. And people believed it and swallowed it. And well, like, like I, we I spoke to the Drawdy United chairman before <clears> the show. So for, say for example, Drawdy United, Finn Harps and Bohemians are waiting on um, basically new or, or radically revamped football grounds. Um, United Park is years and years and years out of date. Finn Park um, is is years and years and years out of date. There, To me, there are concerns about where Daily Mount is going because there, there's been, seems to be a bit of procrastination about the whole thing developing. But the Drogheda are basically waiting on the first, I think they're waiting on the first instalment of grant money that's coming through. But that grant um, was done on behalf of Drogheda United by the FEI because of the ownership of the ground and, and this and that. So Drogheda United are kind of, if you look back on, on the interview that JD did, John, John Delaney did with Nathan Murphy, which is, um, you can find on, on uh, YouTube, which was last year, was it? Um, it was this year. Was it this year? Yes. When they were having, the year, they're having a row with the F they were having a row with the PFAI. And uh, the body language of John Delaney is very interesting in that interview because he, he he gave very few interviews and you could tell he was a little bit uneasy with uh, the questions and he deferred questions about the PFNI and all that. But he was again, as Dan was saying, it was all about trumpeting the good news. And the good news was the finances and the fact that Drawdy United have gotten their ground and everything will be grand. And Drawdy United, like many clubs now, are basically waiting and don't know where they're going. We've got to take a break. 53106, folks. Listeners out there, what do you think of all this? Back in a moment. Football on Off The Ball. With Paddy Power, the greatest football partnership since Jeff and Heskey.